Okay, everybody, we are starting escrow shortage, escrow account, definition of an escrow account. So I, I searched around I, when I was doing this presentation just to give you all really a very succinct, easy explanation. Uh, an escrow account is really kind of like a savings account. Think of it that way. That's managed by the lender or the mortgage servicer. And one of your tax and insurance will go into it each month. And then at the end of the year, whenever the due date is for insurance, for example, there will be an exodus from your, from your account. So there's incoming money in your escrow payment every month you make your payment. And then there's outgoing money a few times a year that pays tax insurance and then mortgage insurance if you've got it. So Investopedia says succinctly, escrow, the true definition of escrow is a third party which holds an asset or funds before they're transferred from one party to another. So there's mortgage escrow, there's title escrow. Uh, escrow is that holding in kind, in, in um, it's more of a legal term, but they're a third party holder of money, information, whatever you have it. So that's the official meaning. Um, do you have to escrow? So this is an interesting one. So yes, no, maybe. Um, if you at closing put down less than 20%, yes, escrow is mandatory. And, and or if you've got a government loan, meaning FHA, VA, or USDA, escrow is always mandatory, no matter if you have the 20% equity or not. But if you did a conventional loan, or like let's say you have a jumbo loan or a conventional once you have 20% equity, you can ask the lender to waive the escrow. So beware though, there is a charge. So to waive it is fine, but the lender is going to charge a fee. It will be dependent on your loan amount. So for example, if your loan is $100,000, they will charge two fifty. dollars If your loan is $200,000, they will charge five hundred. dollars So the fee is because it is more work for the mortgage servicers to, to, to you to not escrow. They have to spend more time and energy chasing down homeowners for the non-payment of their tax and insurance than if they just controlled it themselves. So there is a charge if you want to waive it. So do be prepared for that if you, you know, you're within that 20% equity position and you're like, I'm just sick of this escrow thing, then you, you can control your own tax and insurance for sure. You just will have to pay that fee to get out of it. So I just want you to be prepared for that. If you're less than 20% or if you're in that government loan, you're just, you're just stuck with it. So I, my goal here is that you understand how it works, what to look for so that you can be better prepared every year. Because yes, can this happen every year? Possibly. Now, unless you bought new construction or there was a large difference between the value that the seller had and the value that's now, usually that happens in new construction, the changes shouldn't be large unless there's like a mistake sometimes. Um, so every year, the tax insurance, the escrow account is reanalyzed. So we are in an increasing value market. So it is possible that this could be happening for a near future period. Now, things to watch out for. Um, I mentioned protesting property taxes in the beginning. I've got a webinar coming up in a couple of months. Every year, you're going to have the opportunity to protest your taxes. I definitely suggest that you do this. Um, you know, and protest, you may not always win, but at least you're trying. Again, we're in a rising value market. I do want you to know if it's your homestead, so if it's your primary residence, the max value that it can increase per year is 10%. That's a benefit to you as a primary resident. Uh, it's, your, it's your primary as a homestead. It's called a homestead exemption. And then there's a, you know, there's a cap. So that 10%, if you get your bill for, for property values, then if they're trying to increase your value from 250, you know, the max is 10%. So it can't go out more than 
25,000, which would be 275, you need to protest because they're breaking the rules. So they hopefully don't try to do that. It'll save you a lot of time and effort from, from protesting, but just with some things for you to look out for that you have that benefit, but you have to have filed your homestead exemption form with the county. So if you need help with that on the side, you know, let me know. But the reason I mention this is because protesting your taxes definitely feeds into next year's tax bill and next year's possible escrow shortage. Okay. So this, the spring is a busy time as a homeowner every single year. Escrow analysis is done in February, March, then values come out so that you can protest in the summer and then the bills come out all over again. So it's a repeating cycle every single year. Now insurance, I do want to caution you, insurance definitely is on the rise. I personally have experienced it every single year for like seven years straight. And every year I shop around. I mean, I love my insurance guy and all, but I mean, I, I gotta, gotta shop around. I mean, it goes up and it goes up and every year I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> for me personally, I'm good right where I am, but you want to always check to see if there's a cheaper courier a carrier out there. So definitely before your insurance renews, that's a great time to shop around. Just send your current policy to, you know, a few other carriers and see if you can get it down. Okay. Because insurance going up also can affect your escrow account. So we'll see that in some of the examples that are coming up. Okay. Now, again, I mentioned the annual as the escrow analysis is annual. So if you're a new homeowner watching this and this is your first year owning the home and you're like, what is this escrow analysis thing? It's going to happen every year. So put your seatbelt on because it's not going away. Um, so every calendar year. Now, February to March is normally when this happens, okay, because they pay the taxes in December. And so then they're like, ooh, we paid taxes. Now we got to analyze. Now, sometimes you might get money back. I've gotten money back some years. Uh, currently, that's not happening for me anyway. And for many of you, as values are going up, okay? So in the escrow analysis that we're going to see, you really have a couple of choices because the, the, the lender is paying the tax and the insurance no matter what. Whether the money was there or not, they're never going to let the bill go delinquent ever. And if they do, they'll pay the, the, the late fees because they just had a miss up. You know, they just made a mistake. But they will pay if, if the taxes were $5,000 and the account only had $3,000 in it to pay, they will pay the taxes and they'll reconcile with you later. That's what an, an escrow analysis is. It's, an, it's a reconciliation. They're checking and balancing to make sure they don't have too much of your money and you don't have a shortage, like you don't owe them money, okay? So when they're sending you this, the two things to understand about the analysis is there's not just one way to handle it. You can, A, pay it back in full, or B, you can spread it over time. It's usually a year to pay it back little by little. So that's what we're going to see in the ensuing pages. Cause I want you to really leave here understanding like how the heck do I read this thing? Okay. So we're going to go over just some simple, simple steps about that. Now, the first thing I want you to do is stay calm. I, I just actually the other day, actually this weekend, I got an email. My past client was rightfully freaking out. Like they were emailing me like, oh my gosh, like they were freaking. Okay. And they had a right to, because their payment was going way up, like way up. And I said, Hey, just let's get the facts. Send me your escort out. Like, let's look at what they sent you. And then I compared it to what I knew to be true. I, I did some investigation, which I'm going to teach you. And I found out they actually made an error. They double paid the taxes. So errors do happen, not all the time, but sometimes. And so first, you just got to say, okay, I'm going to we're going to review the facts. 
and then I'll freak out. If I need to freak out, I, I understand it's hard when your payment goes up, but let's look at the facts first. Okay. So that's my imploring message to those of you that have had an escrow shortage uh, that's happening. Now this has a couple snapshots. Um, this is actually a, the client from the weekend actually. So on the left, you see escrow account statements. So on your statement, this is usually in the top, you know, right hand corner on the very first page. So the escrow analysis is usually like three, four pages. And so they're going to have, you know, it's as of when. So they sent this to him, you know, very recently on the 17th. So it's very fresh. And then it says, hey, this is, you know, at the very bottom, it says, this is your new mortgage amount and you're, it's going to be effective on the 1st of April. So this was just last week. So, I mean, we've only got like five, six weeks to reconcile any errors, right? So thankfully, he emailed me and I called him pretty much right away. So if you are a past client of mine, let me help you. We actually, I looked up some of the data and I figured out there was a mistake. They double paid his taxes and I got on the phone with him and helped work it out with the servicer. Okay. Now, not every escrow analysis is a mistake. I'm giving you the worst, the best case scenario. Okay. But I want you to just look at everything. I would print it. I would take out my highlighter and just kind of like, okay, let's get through the details. So I know what I'm looking at now to the right. Um, we're looking at, it's like, okay, I'm looking at the monthly payment breakdown to the right. Like, Hey, the current payment is this. 11 1984 and then the new payment is going to be 1706 so that's a big jump 600 bucks that's a lot for that size payment so then it's like hey the shortage amount is here so that 343.92 was the amount that he was short and it was saying hey we're going to give you a 343 dollar loan payback because you owe us that money so if you take 343 and we times it by 12 the shortage was 4116 which pretty much matches if you see up here at the top right here it says uh oh i can't highlight hang on so right up here above the green boxes here on the right it says likely due to increase in your taxes or insurance your escrow has a shortage of 412706 if you can see that so when you divide that by 12, you get the 343.92 per month. So on your statement, it's going to have something like that. Like, so now, we, now we're getting somewhere because we know from what they're telling us that the shortage was 4,127, according to them. And that's where under shortage amount, if you pop right below where it's in the payment, that 343.92 is added to the payment. Now it's only for 12 months, just FYI. Now they could choose to pay the whole 4,127. I personally, when I've had shortages, I take the free interest-free loan. I'd rather pay it back little by little monthly than dip into my savings. But everybody's different. Some people prefer to pay it. Now in this client's case, luckily, this was an error. So he doesn't have to pay any money. But I want to teach you how to read what's going on. Now, you'll see another thing that I want to point out. So if you if you look to the same monthly payment breakdown in the green box, it says the current payment, you can see the principal and interest is 668.27. And then right below it is 451.57. That's what their escrow deposit was monthly before this bad letter came out, okay? So the 45157 is, if you look to the right, it's going up to 694. So that difference, I'm just gonna do it on my calculator, 694 minus 451 is $243. So what that did was it, it raise it's raising their payment in addition to the shortage not only to pay back the shortage but hey we're gonna put you up 243 dollars so that this time next year you're not short again so when you have an escrow shortage 
you're going up twice. You're going up the one twelfth portion to pay back the shortage in 12 months, the interest-free loan that they're giving you. And you're going up so that you're not short again. So they, there's an analysis on the pages that are behind that. There's an analysis that says, hey, this was the actual and this was what we estimated. And we got a forecast so that you have enough in your account next year. So that's what this means. So that I want you to just, you know, that's on the summary page. So the things that I just, as you're looking at the first page of, and everyone's, you know, every bank, it looks a little bit different. Okay. But these are the key words that I want you to look for. You know, when is the, and here I just have, uh, you know, here a couple underlined comments that I put, when is the new effective date? Because you need to spring into action. Like you can't waste any time looking at any of this because, you know, your new payment will start usually 45 to 60 days notice. So, you know, definitely, um, you know, don't put it to the side for sure. Uh, I know everyone gets busy and some people just leave, the, you know, I don't check my mail sometimes for like four or five days. Like it's, it happens. So just make sure this is a time in the spring, February and March to definitely be on top of your mail. Okay. Now, step two, where I mentioned before that estimated versus actual, the way that they come up with that little differential to increase your payment so it's not short next year is from something that looks like this, okay? Um, is you, you look at the estimated, you know, usually on the left-hand column, they'll say, hey, this was your estimated activity. Um, and this is a different client. This, this snapshot that I got is I got it off the internet. So it's not that specific client that was before. But you'll look at the estimated activity versus the actual. So I, again, I like to highlight. I like to just, you know, I print it out from the online and I, I highlight so I can see exactly what I'm looking for. And when you see exactly what, it's, what you're looking for, you say, okay, what did they estimate and what was the actual? And that's usually where you can count the mistakes, like a double payment, uh, et cetera. And so what you're doing is you're just prepping so that you can highlight, you know, what the actual was. And then you can, the next step, the step three is to verify the actual amounts that were paid. That's where, when I did this for that other client, I noticed, I was like, oh my gosh, they paid taxes twice. And that it happens. I mean, it does happen. You know, the computers and it, it happens. Doesn't always happen, but it happens. So go, you, you know, as a homeowner, you get copies of the bills every year. I would definitely not throw those away. I would keep them because this could happen. When you want to access them quickly, and you only have a 45 day timeline before your payment goes up, you're going to be scrambling, wishing that you didn't throw those bills away. Okay. So put them somewhere in a folder or something that you can access them so that if you need to double cross check, you can. Okay. So some of your taxing entities, you have several, like there's the county bill, the, I, the you know, school ISD bill, and sometimes there's a mud, like a municipal utility district or something. So some of you have everything in one bill. And some of you have two or three different bills. Okay. So if you're not sure, uh, you can contact me. If I'm your original lender, you can ask me or, you know, whatever you need to do. Um, now on the insurance, you can, I would also save, you know, your insurance policy every year that it renews, about a month or two before you get the renewal notice. And it kind of gives you a heads up at that time. If you see that your premium is going up, you need to think like, ooh, my escrow account might be short next year. Like it's a, it's a trigger. But I would keep that to compare, again, did they pay the amount that was really actually due? I mean, I'm gonna let y'all, I mean, y'all, I've actually two weeks ago, I had another client call and I'm so glad that y'all reach out to me when I, to help you. 
Um, I'm happy to do it because I have all your records, you know, from when we've helped you. Um, and so that other client, the wrong county bill got sent, her lender picked up the wrong county bill. So they paid an amount that was five or $600 higher than what it should have been. So we pulled her bill off the county site and I helped her call the lender and said, hey, I'm going to give you an example. Let's say the bill was supposed to be $1,400, but what they actually paid was $1,800. So I caught it by looking at the actual. So here you can see the act, you know, you, that's why I highlighted, I, I printed it out and I highlighted it for her. So I looked at the actual taxes that were paid and it was higher than what the actual bill was. And so that's, how I found that error. I mean, it does happen. So, you know, I give some examples at the bottom of this page, you know, double payments, wrong bills, mixing up with other accounts. I mean, again, it happens. Okay. So step four is really your options. And I alluded to it at the beginning, but, but if, if you ver if you do the steps and you verify that, oh my gosh, Unfortunately, there's no errors. There's nothing to fix. Okay, like this, this was my insurance and yes, this was my taxes. You can either A, pay the shortage in full and that'll keep your payment from going up twice. It'll only go up once. Or you can pay that shortage over the 12 months, which was that first example that I showed you that that shortage amount, that first um on that back in the uh, prior page. So again, some people to, you know, some clients know that it's coming. So if in the future, you know that it's coming, it's good to put that money aside and then you're, you're ready and you're like, yep, here's the lump sum. So my payment doesn't go up. Um, now, uh, what's my note here? Oh, even if you pay the shortage in full, your payment will, you know, again, your payment still is going to go up that differential so it's not short again next year. So there have been cases where, you know, clients just, you know, especially when clients have fixed incomes where they just start to not be able to afford the house. Um, that does happen. If so, you know, contact your lender contact the you know original lender that helped you maybe call your real you know see if you can get some ideas of, of what you know can help you guys out you might be able to do a loan modification um, but if your taxes are your taxes and you're within that 10 percent tolerance uh, you know values are in a point where they're going up unfortunately so we don't know how long but I, I think it's going to be for the next several years at least so We've got to be really prepared for payments to potentially go up little by little each year. I know, I know I'm preparing for it. Um, the fifth step, again, what if there's an error? What if you have questions? You know, call your, your servicer, your mortgage servicer of who's you're making to payments to now. That's always the first best defense. Um, you know, if I was your original lender, that means I have your, your documents. I'm happy to call with you. We can call conference. So you can give them permission to talk to me. Um, make sure you take notes. Make sure you get a case number. Be very nice. They will help you. You know, remember there are people too. I know that, you know, clients, you know, y'all get frustrated. I get it. And, and it's like, oh my gosh, my payment. Just take a breath. They will help you understand or... If your payments are just where you can't afford them, see if they have any kind of help. Um, you know, they might have a special department that's a hardship department. So you want to talk to them about that. Um, you know, ask them how you need to send the supporting documents. Like, let's say there was an error, like we talked about, um, you know, the person I called a couple days ago with the client, they don't have an email. You have to either fax it or they secure it, upload on the site. Uploading it on the site is always best, but if you have to go to Home Depot, you know, Office Max or whatever and fax it, you got to fax it. Um, some of them have emails, so you just have to, you know, figure out which one you have to do. Always send yourself a copy. 
And then set a follow-up date. Like I would put in your calendar, like for this particular client, we have to, you know, we have to do something on the, on the 31st of March. So we put a task on our calendar. I did it on mine. They did it on theirs to remember of something that they need to do. So there might be some follow-up stuff because his payment is changing on April 1st. So um, what we did ask the lender, so if there has been an error and you know, you've got paperwork going to them, the question I want you to ask is like, hey, what if what I'm sending you, you know, your escrow department doesn't, you know, figure it out or get the payment, you know, the refund from the county or whatever. By the time my payment's changing, I mean, my payment's changing in five weeks. So in this case, they said, you have to call us. Don't auto debit the payment. So take it off auto debit. Call us. You got to do the payment over the phone. Give us the case number. We'll know that it's an investigation and we'll let you make a short payment. So you want to definitely always involve the lender if you're going to make a short payment, like because you disagree or whatever. Don't just short the payment and not let them know what you're doing. Please, please, please communicate with the lender so they can give you a case number that it's under investigation, you know, et cetera, whatever pertains to you. Okay. If that is the case. Okay. Um, 